Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Partridge, a W eLearning Evangelist. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about using a learning management system with Adobe Captivate. Let's get started. As you can see here, I have a typical project open in Captivate. I'd like to add a quiz to that project, so I'll click on Quiz and then Question Slide, and then I'll go ahead and add some quiz questions into my project. So I've added those quiz questions in, and then I click OK. And once those quiz questions are in, you'll see that they're all nicely laid out and formatted. And there's a final summary page here at the end. And that's all good, but I'd like to report those to my learning management system. I go back to quiz and then choose quiz preferences. Once I've chosen quiz preferences, then at the top, I'll check enable reporting for this project. That's enable reporting for this project. You'll see immediately below that option, is a drop down menu that contains SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, AICC, and some other options. You definitely want to choose the option which is right for your learning management system. Most of the time, your learning management system will be either SCORM 1.2 or SCORM 2004. A good place to start is to find out what format your LMS is actually using. Now, generally speaking, it'll be some flavor of SCORM. Once you've chosen the SCORM, click on the Configure button to set up the basic parameters for your particular uh, instance. Now you'll see here that the identifier is the first thing. This is the course identifier. It's not the SCO identifier. SCO is the individual object or lesson that you're uploading. The course can be a more complex course. SCORM actually has support for more than one individual item or individual module, course module, inside of a common course. Captivate, however, by itself only produces one SCO per course item, all right? So one project per course item. If you would like to be able to publish more than one project and have those all included in a single course, then you should check out the eLearning Suite for its ability to use the multi-SCO packager and upload more than one project into a course. Now here, under the course, we'll put the basic course identifier. Let's say this is a course about uh, geometry. There we'll put the identifier. It's important to keep in mind that this identifier needs to be unique. Captivate generates a unique ID for you. It's a good idea for you to put one in too. So for example, if this is your 54th course, you might want to put that in there along with any information that you like to use to help keep that course clearly labeled for you. Down below, you'll see the title of the course. This is the title that is given to the learner by the learning management system to identify the course. So you would want to put a title in here that's friendly for people to be able to read, uh, like all about geometry. Then the description field. In the description field, this is what your LMS will show people when they're looking at it to try to determine what the course is. There you'll want to put a detailed description about your particular course. Underneath that, you'll see the version option. Versions are used with SCORM objects in order to, to determine which uh, version of the course this actually is. So let's say you uploaded your initial course, and then later you decided, oh, I have to make this small change. And if you made that small change, you would want to alter the version so that the next time you upload it, it was, for example, 1.1 or 1.2, 1.3, and so on. And you can just keep counting up for each version. The system will recognize that. The next option here is actually an optional solution. You can tell the learner approximately how long it will take to complete the course. Captivate will estimate based on the number of slides you have and the duration of the project, but you'll need to tell it specifically how long you estimate that the course should take to complete. Finally, you can optionally insert keywords if you'd like to. You can insert keywords to help people search and find the course on your learning management system. Below, you'll see the SCO field, and in the SCO field, that's where the SCORM project is actually stored. It also needs to have a unique identifier. These unique identifiers are only seen by the course, so you don't need to worry about the learners following those elements. 
But in this case, you'd put in the SCO ID, or you can accept the default one that's given by Captivate. And then here, you would put the title of this individual project. I'm going to call this one uh, Triangles. Okay. Then finally, we'll say OK. Now we've configured the basic settings for our SCORM course. We don't need to worry about templates too much most of the time. These are left for uh, legacy purposes. Uh, they were sometimes necessary in the past. Now with the new solution for SCORM integration, they're seldom needed. What we've done is we've actually integrated the SCORM.com Rustiki drivers. And the SCORM.com drivers for LMSs uh, do an amazing job of actually integrating SCORM and AICC standards into virtually every learning management system there is. If you want to learn more about the verified learning management solutions that are out there, you can actually click on this little link down here and it'll show you a list of those learning management solutions that we've actually verified will absolutely work right out of the box with Captivate. Those are the list of the ones that we have verified, but there are, as I said, many, many, many that will work in addition that while unverified are certainly known to work quite effectively uh, with SCORM.com drivers. So we're thrilled about that. SCORM.com is really the industry standard uh, and has really done a marvelous job. Uh, so I'm sure that you're going to find that your LMS integration works really fantastically well uh, with Captivate 6. Now up at the top, you're going to see something that might seem a bit different to you. Uh, at the top, if you're choosing 1.2, uh, SCORM 1.2, you'll see that status representation can move from incomplete status to complete status, or it can move from the incomplete status to the past failed status. Incomplete status is what is set the moment that a student or a learner actually accesses the course. Once the criteria for successful completion are reached, it will then either be marked as complete or as passed or failed in the event that those criteria are reached and you've chosen the passed failed option. Okay, so you actually have the ability in SCORM 1.2 to be able to choose either of those options. For now, I'll just leave it at complete. Down below, you'll see the actual success criteria, and this is how the solution knows that the course has been completed. What you're going to do is you can, for example, choose just user access. If you chose just user access, then as soon as the user accessed the course and reached the amount of the course that was specified here, then automatically that learner would be given credit for user access. If you choose, on the other hand, slide views or a quiz, you can actually assign the number of slide views that are required and or you can actually assign to a determination of whether the quiz has been passed or whether the quiz was simply attempted, or whether the quiz was passed, or it reached its attempt limit. So for example, let's say that you said the learner can try to do this quiz twice, but after twice, I don't want them to have any more tries. Well, in that case, Captivate would look at it and say, well, they didn't pass the first time, they didn't pass the second time, uh, but that means that they have completed the task because they've attempted twice and failed both times. So you can see that having all three uh, uh, methods is actually a very effective way to be able to work with your LMS. Now down below here, you'll see that the data to report field contains what method you would like to use to report the data. The percentage can be used or points. So if you prefer to have a percentage expressed in the LMS in terms of the reporting, check the percentage box. If you prefer to use points, then choose the points solution. You can also have interaction data like click boxes and other things that have the ability to be reported. You can have them included in the report that goes to the LMS, or you can have them not included. Just check it if you want to include the interaction data. The initialization text is the text that appears when the LMS first loads the Captivate course. So initially, when it begins to load the course, right now, by default, you would see the word loading. But you can choose whatever text you want to appear there. So if you'd like to customize that text while the course is loading initially, you can go ahead and customize that text. Finally, you see an advanced tab down here. And in the advanced tab, you'll notice several settings. Now, the first of those settings 
is to never send resume data, okay? Never send resume data means that the information about the last known position of the learner will not be sent to the learning management system. Generally, you do not want to check this because what you like to do for the most part is have the solution where wherever they left off, if they left the course at a given moment, is where the course will return to in the event that they return. If you check this option, never send resume data, then when a learner returns to the course, they won't return to the specific location where they left off, okay? The next option is set exit to normal after completion. Let's say you had a course that was online and you wanted the learner to be able to revisit that course more than once, even after they'd successfully passed it. Setting exit to normal after completion will reset the course. It basically clears all the resume data and it makes it possible for the learner to actually go back to the very beginning. Now notice it only does that after completion. So it will do that after the course has been successfully completed. Whether they passed or failed, successful completion, of course, only means that it was completed in accordance with the standards that you set up. Failure could, in fact, be a form of completion. Finally, down here, you'll see escape version and session ID. This is a way to do what's called URL encode or to encode the URL string. This gets fairly technical. That's why it's under the advanced settings tab. So you won't have to worry about that in a normal situation. Now, that's all of the settings for the SCORM 1.2. If you were doing SCORM 2004, notice that the settings change slightly. They don't change completely, but they do change slightly. It's important to note that SCORM 2004 includes additional reporting in Captivate 6. So you'll actually get what we call verbose reporting, or reporting that includes all of the text from the questions and the answers, and all kinds of additional elements are reported. So you, if you want the verbose reporting, you're going to want to use the SCORM 2004 approach. The basic aspects beyond that are fairly similar. Notice that completion criteria is specified, but it's slightly different in the way that it's set up. You can choose whether you want completion to occur on user access or whether you want it to occur on slide views and or quiz. You can also choose the same options for quizzes attempted, passed, or passed or the quiz attempt limit has been reached. So you can choose any of those options that you prefer. You want to keep in mind that slide views 100% is generally used in the case that you want the course to be completely touched, every slide that's in the course to be touched. If you have a course that uses branching, you definitely do not want to demand 100% of the, of the course be reached. Check your course that uses branching and figure out if they took the shortest path through the course, what percentage of the slides would actually be visited. And then you can just enter in the percent of slides that you need in order to have that approach. You could also just count the slides and enter them in as a actual number of slides. All right. You can also just use the quiz criterion in order to determine whether or not the completion criteria has been met. Now, of course, completion criteria, slightly different than success criteria. So as we look at the next section, success criteria determines whether or not they have successfully completed and passed the specific quiz. So the data to report uh, is down here, and that gives you the extended interaction data as an option. And then finally, the LMS initialization text, same as the other location. You'll find the advanced tab is the same. And the Configure tab, while slightly different, is only slightly different. One thing to note about the Configuration tab in SCORM 2004, you have the ability to choose editions. You can choose second, third, or fourth edition when you're using SCORM 2004 in order to build your course. Now, once you're finished with your LMS uh, um, configuration, go ahead and press OK to accept that that's the configuration for your LMS. Then you're going to create a file which will be uploaded to the LMS. To do that, just choose File and then Publish. Once you in the Publish dialog, choose the Swift HTML option, Output Format to Swift or to HTML5, either one or both, and then choose the Zip Files option. Okay, You want to choose the Zip Files option 
because that's the format that is commonly supported by all LMSs. There are some LMSs that will only support the zipped file for upload of the SCOs. So go ahead and choose that zip file option and then press the publish button when you're ready to go. Once you've published your content, it will be saved into the location that's specified in the folder. You can optionally look at that content and see what it's made up of. Now, we can say OK to this dialog, but let's go ahead and take a look now at what actually was published when we published that material. We'll go ahead and look in our Documents folder and then our My Adobe Captivate Projects. There you can see I've got a project which is zipped up and which is called Untitled 1 matching the project. Inside, you're going to see a lot of different files. Those are the files that will be uploaded to your LMS. There are a couple that might be interesting to you if you are very interested in what happens on an LMS. The first one here is an IMS manifest.xml. This IMS manifest is actually the file which is used by the LMS to sort out how to handle the reporting of data between Captivate's quiz and your actual project. Also on this piece, you're going to find uh, that there are HTML files and multiple HTML files in order to handle both the Captivate Swift and the HTML5 content. What happens is dynamically the HTML is sorted based on the kind of device that's accessing the course. So if an iOS device like an iPad is accessing the course, then HTML5 will be given. If a computer like a laptop that uses a browser which only supports Flash is used, then in that case, the Swift file will be given to the learner. So automatically, the system will give the right file to the learner when it's required. So that's a lot more about how Captivate handles LMS integration and how Captivate works with SCORM. Your last step is simply to upload your SCO file into your LMS.